Hi guys, so I'm here to give you my first and second trimester update about baby number two. So, um, this pregnancy has been very day and night compared to my last pregnancy with my son Andrew. Um, my first month was pretty rough for me um, compared to what it was with Andrew. Um, so my first month after conceiving um, our baby, I literally got all the pregnancy symptoms. I got nauseous, it was very emotional. Um, what was the other one? My boobs were hurting and um, yeah, just the normal telltale signs that when you know you look up, am I pregnant? Are these signs of being pregnant? Pretty much got those. Um, but when that happened, I was in denial about it because I figured, oh, I'm just sick or, you know, I just ate something bad, my stomach doesn't feel good or, you know, whatever. That's what I kind of brushed it off as. But um, my friend, her name is Allie. She is a labor and delivery nurse um, that I met in my breastfeeding support group. I was talking to her and I said, hey, you know, I think my prenatals are making me sick. These are my symptoms. And she goes, basically, she was like, if it quacks like a duck and sounds like a duck, you're basically pregnant, Mickey. And I was like, no, I'm not. I can't be pregnant that easy. Like, it just can't happen that easy. Um, because we had been trying since January to have baby number two. And um, it just wasn't happening. But then again, we weren't really putting in that much effort to have baby number two. Hold on, Andrew's getting up from his nap. Come here. Come here. Come here. Hi, baby. So, um, we weren't really putting that much effort into baby number two. But, um, much effort into baby number two. Um, until March happened and with Andrew um, we had him right away we got him we basically um, what I kind of realized is uh, I ovulate pretty much close to when I end my cycle so um, this last time when we were talking in February hey we really need to try um, I remember when my cycle was happening and we basically tried for that when my cycle was happening um, so that's how that came to be. But back to my friend Allie, um, she was saying, you know, have I taken a pregnancy test? And I said, no, I didn't, I haven't bought any pregnancy test. Um, so I was like, I can't be pregnant. That's just too easy to be pregnant so soon. Um, so then the next day I just kept hearing her voice in my head, you know, you're pregnant, Mickey, you're pregnant. How exciting you're pregnant. And I'm like, no, I can't, that can't be. So, um, like I said, uh, then I went to the Dollar Tree, the Dollar Tree, and they got pregnancy tests there. I bought five of them because I was like, let's see how accurate they are. Because you know, you're kind of like, oh, a dollar. They might not be that accurate. No, it was accurate. Um, so I still have a couple left over. And then I had one of those really nice first response um, tests. But I only had one of those because those are expensive. You know, a pack of two or three is like close to twenty bucks. And I bought five of them for five dollars at the Dollar Tree. So you see what I'm saying. So I took um, one that day of the Dollar the Dollar Tree pregnancy test and it came back positive and it wasn't a very strong line. Like it wasn't like bright, bright, bright because it was during the day and um, you're supposed to take your pregnancy test the first thing in the morning because that's when every, everything's just, you know, there. All the hormones are strong and everything's just there uh, when you take it first thing in the morning. So I sent her a picture and she's like, yeah, I can see a line. A line is a line, Mickey. So I'm like, okay. So I was like, I'll take another one tomorrow. I'll take my, my first response one the next morning and I'll still take a, one of my dollar ones. And I took, um, I did that that morning and um, my, my dollar tree came up positive again and my first response said that it came up positive again. Like as soon as it was the line, you know, well, you the girls that have taken pregnancy tests, you know the line when it just, you know, you can see it go like that. Um, when it's soaking it up, basically, you see it. And so, uh, I could see it, and it came before the actual, like, test line, I guess you would say, actually started showing up. 
so that one pretty much came out positive and after that I believed it and like I said I had taken it within one week of um, finding out I was pregnant um, and then the next week ouch, then the following week um, I called to make an appointment um, to get seen by my doctor well my doctor and what I needed to do is I had to go up to the window where you check in basically because we have base privileges and my husband's a retiree of army so that's where my doctor is so I went to the window and they gave me this form to fill out and then they sent me down to the lab to go do lab work and I uh, didn't have to pee on a stick over there basically they just do lab work and they check your you know your levels in your blood to see if it's true and literally I think they called me I went in a Monday or Tuesday and they called me a Wednesday or Thursday I can't remember which day because it's been so long now and um, the the nurse was basically yeah you are pregnant your HCG is very high and that's what you know indicates that you're pregnant she goes that's very it's very not it's not very common for you for women this early on to show that much that you have that much but yes you are you're very much pregnant and um, then from there I got a referral to go see an OB because um, the base that we have here is not like a hospital where Fort Carson was where they actually had a hospital this one's a clinic and they don't deliver babies it's just um, like you go to a no normal clinic you always don't see the same doctor twice usually and the lady that is the OB doctor there she um, just does normal OB checks and routine stuff she doesn't deliver babies anymore I meant to go see my doctor that I had with my son that I had with my son um, and they did an ultrasound and they just saw to see if there was an you know basically a baby there so they were just looking for like the sack and there was and you could see the little itty bitty thing that there was of a baby there and um, then I she told me to come back in a month again and then I you know I came back I come back every month basically until I get closer to my due date then you'll come back you know every two weeks or if not you know if there are any complications and you come back weekly so you know I was just so excited and Jason was out of town at work so um, I took a picture of the the picture of the ultrasound and I sent it to him so he could see it but it was, it's just exciting so that's how I found out I was pregnant baby number two didn't think it was gonna be that easy but we got lucky and it was um, but my symptoms as it progressed after that got progressively worse and a lot stronger than it was with Andrew. Um, I was constantly nauseous to the point where um, I'm pretty much back to the weight I was when I had Andrew, which was 140. Uh, I got, I had such bad nausea and I guess you'd say morning sickness um, with this baby that I just laid on the floor, would lay on the bed or just sit here in this chair and I would just try to eat something and it would make me sick as can be and I would just literally be just like hunched over in just such pain pain be from eating what I just ate and it wasn't anything ridiculous it was toast it was a sandwich it was whatever even coffee um, would just anything water would hurt my stomach so within that month I pretty much dropped back to my pre-pregnancy weight with Andrew which I'm not complaining about because I know I'm just going to gain it all back because with Andrew, after I had him and been nursing him, um, I gained, I think I was about 160, close to 160, and I'm only 5'3 on a good day, so that's a lot of weight on my body and I felt it, um, but I didn't know how to lose the weight, so this baby helped me lose it, lose the weight. So I was, I dealt with that a lot. And then I also, on top of that, um, was very emotional, like I said, over nothing. Um, I realized too, when I was breastfeeding him, that um, it hurt so bad. Like it literally felt like I was trying to nurse again. Like when you, you first, first time mom's trying to nurse, it just hurts, you know? You know it gets better, but it just hurts. So. 
that's what it was starting to feel like and that was another indicator that I was pregnant um, and what was the other one the other one was so my next one was sciatica um, I do not wish that upon anybody that pain if you live with it chronically every day kind of thing um, I, I I feel you now it is painful and awful so um, first I just thought like I was having bad Charlie horses in my lower back and butt area but it progressively as the days and weeks went on it just got worse and worse and worse to the point where like if I was sitting in this chair and I'd been down to change Andrew I couldn't sit back up without being in pain of a Charlie horse so I started even adding more fluids into my intake and I bought calcium because my doctor said you know it could be a calcium deficiency a lot of women have that so I started taking calcium and that wasn't doing any of a difference for me thank you that wasn't doing any type of a difference for me so I stopped taking that um, I did take some Tylenol here and there um, when I'm pregnant I try to take least amount of stuff that's consume that's bad for you so I cut out I pretty much cut out coffee not coffee I'm sorry I would never cut coffee out pretty much cut out soda um, any extra caffeine a lot of sugar a lot of just you know things that you shouldn't normally eat on a regular I try to cut those out even more when I'm pregnant but don't get me wrong, I still have my one cup of coffee every day because I am within my perfect parameters. Yeah. yeah. I am within my perfect parameters of having coffee. Coffee you can take while you are pregnant. And if I keep glancing down, it's because Andrew's right in front of me. He just woke up from his nap. And he is playing with his big Nerf rifle gun. But anyways, um, I still have coffee. I do have soda on occasions. Most times it's not doesn't have caffeine in it. It's usually like a Sprite or a root beer. Um, I do get cravings really bad for caffeine now. Now that I'm further along right now, guys, I am 19 weeks this week. We found out what the, what we are having, so that will be going up on my blog as well. And of course, of my next up my next updates, you will also know what um what we are having as well. But um. <laughs> What are you doing? Yeah. I see that. It was just so painful. And um, I finally couldn't take it anymore. So I know some chiropractors do pregnant, do, um, they adjust you while you're pregnant and some don't. So I called and asked if, you know, my chiropractor did see women while they're pregnant and he does. So that was like a big relief. Um, so I went to go see him that week when I had my was at my worst and he I went two visits he adjusted me and um, after his adjustments it helped dramatically even just um, even just coming when he the first time he adjusted me just leaving it was so much better I could actually bend down and not be in pain or I could be fully standing and just not be in pain so it does work um, my second one he just tried to readjust to see if it flared up or if I was having any more pains in certain areas and I wasn't so basically he told me you know if you're not having any more pains don't come back until basically you're about due and we'll readjust you then um, he says I can't prove that it helps with the delivery but I had a lot of patients that said that say it does help with delivery and it cuts down the delivery time drastically so I will be seeing him when I get further along to get readjusted when I get closer to my um, due date because why not if it's gonna cut down my delivery time I'm not gonna question that so let's see what else I had that bad um, I still have some spurts of it here and there where it does hurt really bad some days but it's nowhere near where it was for my first trimester um, going into my second trimester it's been a breeze a lot more easy than it was with Andrew Andrew I was constantly always had morning sickness it was just it was just always there um, anything I did I had motion sickness with Andrew really bad so driving in the car at any periods um, was kind of hard 
stop. So driving in the car for any type of period was hard sometimes. I would have to just plan it out in my head where we were going and um, basically just look at my phone if I could or just keep my mind off of it because it was very hard. This Luckily this time around, I do not have motion sickness, so I am happy with that because I do not like having motion sickness to anything. I never had it before, so I never really experienced it. Um, but yeah, it was... It's. I don't wish that on anybody either. Uh, but this time it's gone away. Um, I'm st I have my days where I'm very tired and I'm not some days. Um, when Jason does have his days off, I will ask him to watch Andrew for a extra couple hours so I could sleep in in the morning, which Jason is currently working um, 12, 12 hour shifts for two weeks straight and then he might if he's lucky he might get two days off but usually he'll get one day off so um you know sometimes he'll take him and watch andrew for an extra two hours or so in the morning andrew wakes up at 6 30 every morning so 6 36 every morning so when jason is here i do try to take advantage of that so i can do catch up on what little sleep i can um while I have the chance because I know it's going to be rough having two of them <laughs> a newborn and a toddler while I do that so let's see what else what else what else um uh, cravings I'm craving pretty much the same thing I craved with Andrew a lot of starches a lot of potatoes sandwiches chips things that I don't usually eat when I'm not pregnant I am craving that like crazy so it's I know this baby's probably gonna be like his brother or yeah this baby's gonna be like its brother um, I, with Andrew I the only thing I could really keep down was uh, anything with a potato french fries baked potato um, mashed potatoes I ate a lot of that with Andrew and this one these days I am I have the same thing where if I'm feeling nauseous or I just need something to snack on, it's something with a potato. And I know chips aren't the healthiest, but it's the most, you know, when you're just hungry and the sight of, you know, making something with a chick with chicken is just off turning. So I eat a lot of stuff with potatoes. I still drink a lot, a lot, a lot of water. Um, I have this and I drink a bunch of this a day. Andrew usually has been taking it and drinking it too as well. But I drink a bunch of these a day. And this is a, uh, let's see how much ounces. This is a 24 ounce cup. So I drink a lot of these a day, especially at night, right before I go to bed. I drink a lot of them right before I go to bed because, you know, when you sleep, you dehydrate yourself. And that's when your body is trying to fix itself. So I drink a lot of that. Um, my nighttime isn't any is any bad I'm having a lot more vivid dreams now um, I can't watch certain shows before I go to bed because then I'll dream about them and they are just weird as can be they are just weird 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 so um, I watch I kind of um, watch simple stuff before I go to bed like interior designing or documentaries that the way I don't have extra vivid dreams of what I just watched see what else um I usually go and get up once to go to the restroom a night once a night maybe twice if I drink a lot of water um but it's been really hot lately not this week it's not been as hot as it has been but it's still in the 90s close to the hundreds so stop so like I said I've been drinking a lot of extra water on top of what I've normally drink um and let's see what else this baby moves around like crazy um, when we had our ultrasounds it was just moving Andrew never did that when we had Andrew they always had to find the, his heartbeat first to see if he was even basically like alive so this one moves it goes anywhere you see its fingers you see it toes it rolls around so that's always the first indication that we're good like I said, Andrew, when we did any kind of ultrasound on him, he would just lay there and would not move for nothing. Like, nothing. 
It's like you kind of felt like your screen froze. That's what it felt like with Andrew, and this one's a total opposite. Um, I could say I started feeling the baby move around, I want to say around 10, 11 weeks since it's my second. I kind of have an idea of what it feels like already. Um, it, of course, it's not as strong as it is now. It moves around like crazy now. It it's insane and it, it's very painful this time around this one kicks a lot and stretches and punches I'm assuming a lot a lot a lot and it goes in the most uncomfortable positions it will go like in my side right here and be in a little ball and it just hurts so bad sometimes uh, Andrew was never like that Andrew was just very content just being in my belly and doing his own thing like he is now he's just very content as long as he does his thing and not what you want him to do. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's the these two are very opposite in that aspect of how how the pregnancy is going. Um I haven't noticed myself losing any more hair right now, but postpartum I'm sure I'm gonna lose um my hair again like I did with Andrew but luckily I've got so much hair that it's not going to even be noticeable because I didn't really notice that I had lost that much hair until it started growing back and all these baby hair started popping up so I got blessed with that but these two will basically be two years and three months apart Andrew is born in September and my doctor says this one should be born around the same time Andrew was born Andrew was born at 37 weeks so she said it might be born a week early or around the same time Andrew was maybe one week late. And my due date is January 5th. So some somewhere in December we're guessing is when this one baby's gonna be born. But they're gonna be close. It's gonna be like Jason and his sister, very close in age. And that's what we wanted. Um, we picked out two names, ouch, for the baby. So you will see, like I said, um, what we are having and what we chose. But that is all I have to say. Um, I will show you my belly. It's not, it's not like it's big, but it's getting there. So I will show you my belly. And I just want to say thank you for watching. Um, comment down below if you have any comments or questions. Or just to say hi. I mean, this is just basically for... Anybody just wants to know about me and our lives about this next time around. I wish I would have done this with Andrew with, when I had him, but I was not into the vlogging when we were pregnant with Andrew by any means. I was just, we are not vlogging. It was just more of a thought like, hey, what if I started vlogging and recording this? It was more of a thought as opposed to where it was now. Yes, it was. It was more of a thought as opposed to what it is to now where I kind of do it more on the regular so I do like doing this next time I will try to be more I'll try to write something down so I have stuff to go off of so I'm not sporadic and telling stories here there there and everywhere I'm one of those people that gets off track goes one way and then eventually I'll remember and loop back around where I started when I'm telling stories I'm not a good storyteller Jason says that I'm not and I believe him but yeah like I said um thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it Andrew you say bye? Bye. Say bye? Yeah.